next we will move on to the summary measures for numerical variables so we have to first define the numerical column so let me just write that define numerical columns so again we will be preparing a list that contains the names of the numerical variables so let us scroll above and see what were the numerical variables so you can see age was one of them then you have the time spent number of devices and monthly ott bill so you have four numerical variables so we will just give that as a list over here so the first one is age then you have uh, the time spent next is your number of devices then monthly ott bill age time spent number of devices and monthly ott bill right so if you can recall then for numerical variables what are the measures of central tendency these are mean median and mode so we will use these over here now so first of all so we i will calculate let me just write a comment over here calculate mean median and mode so here again we will be initiating a for loop numerical columns so here it will again be going through each item in this list one by one and assign it to this variable call over here for each iteration for this then we will have we will extract those from the data frame okay so here we have extracted the values for the current variable that has been chosen and we have extracted its values from the data frame and saved it in this values so in order to first we will calculate the mean so let us see how we get that mean so for this purpose we will be using the numpy library with the mean function you can also use the statistics library also because it has mean median so i just want to show you how numpy works so mean is equal to dot mean and here in the bracket you will write values so it will call the mean function from the numpy library to calculate the mean of the values for the column that has been extracted we can likewise calculate the median also again we will call the numpy library and this function num median function and we will write values over here we can also get the mode so if you remember for mode we use the statistics function sorry statistics library statistics dot mode we are not using numpy because numpy does not have a built in function for mode so we will go back and use our statistics library only if you want to print these so i can write print i want it to with, come with the string f string is there so statistics for the column that we are choosing 
sorry right so it will first evaluate this expression call and then it will embed in the string okay so whatever column has been selected from here that heading will come so this heading will come and then we want the mean to be printed so if we want the mean over here so it can be mean should appear in this way the mean value we have saved it in mean here next we can have the median likewise we can just similarly like write it median comma this print so if you can recall so mode we usually prefer for categorical variables and uh, mode we don't use especially for continuous variables because it does not give much difference right so it is difficult to identify the mode there so we have discussed this in our lecture also mode value and then we just print we want uh, the cursor to move to the new line sorry so since i have already defined statistics as st so let me just write st over here and then this error yeah so you can see first it is giving the heading statistics so it has chosen this column over here age and then it is giving the mean of the values from that median is 41.0 mode is also coming here right similarly you will have statistics for time spent so you see that there is a gap in between this it is coming just because of this print command over here because it has shifted the cursor to this now once the loop finishes it prints this and then a space will come and then again the loop will start if you want to restrict it to two decimal places only so we can use that same we have used earlier also we just write f over here and we will just write mean we will specify the formatting so let us see if it is giving the correct answer so now it has considered mean up to two decimal places only right so this is one way of writing it if you want there are other functions as well right so here you can use the round off function also and or the format one also so if you want suppose here only i can write suppose let us do for median now so median is there after this you write round in bracket you will this median is there and then whatever number of decimal places you need you will mention that okay so median so here you it is going to two decimal places already so let us just consider one decimal place so it has given the median up to one decimal place now okay so you have calculated the summary measures for the categorical variables and then for numerical variables we have seen for the measures of central tendency that is mean median and mode so now we are going to look at the measures of variation that is range iqr standard deviation and variance and also the coefficient of variation for these numerical variables that we have already defined in this column okay so for this we also need one more library so we will import scipy library 
is stats module from there. So I will just write scipy dot stats as stats. So basically we have called for this stats module from the scipy library. So basically it allows you to access various statistical functions and methods which are provided by this library and it has wide range of statistical functions including measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, in fact hypothesis testing and probability distribution. So you can get all of these here. So we import it first of all and uh, the data is already with us and we have already mentioned uh, define the list of numerical columns. So now we can start with the for loop. So we will initiate the for loop. So I will just calculate range IQR, standard deviation, variance and coefficient of variation. So we will initiate a for loop again as we have done earlier also. Numerical columns and then we will extract those values from there. Extract data call. So the column that has been selected of the values will be extracted from that particular column will be extracted here. Data. First of all, we need the date range. So we will call the NumPy library and from there we will use the p2p function because it is basically p2p because range is what range is max minus minimum right so it will calculate the range of values in that particular column so p2p we write this is the function from numpy library values after range we need iqr and for iqr which is basically the difference between q1 and q3 so we need to first find out q1 q3 so let me write this q3 q1 again we will call the numpy library and we will use the percentile function from there values comma 75 because that is your q3 and 25 is your q1 25 percent so it calculates 75th percentile and uh, 25th percentile that is q3 and q1 of the values using the np percentile function and now you can calculate the iqr which is basically the difference between q3 and q1 right so range is done iqr is done then we move on to standard deviation so i can just write sd over here sd is what np dot again numpy library so it will calculate the standard deviation for those values likewise we can have i can just write small sd so here we will have the variance where So I should better write it as the full name variance np dot var values. So this one will calculate the standard deviation for the values, which is a measure of spread of the data. And here it will calculate the variance. So all these four are done. So we are just left with coefficient of variation. So coefficient of variation we need, which is basically sigma by mu. So we need mean also. So let me just find mean also using the mean function from numpy library and then we can easily find coefficient of variation cv i am writing down which is sd divided by mean okay so it is the ratio of the standard deviation to mean basically the relative measure of variability in comparison to mean. So first of all we need this heading to come statistics for column. 
so you can modify these headings as per your need this is just an example over here statistics for this column and then we need first of all we need the range to appear so range So we have saved the range in data comma data underscore range. So data underscore range we will write. And uh, after range we need the IQR value. So we can write IQR. So what is IQR? We have saved it in small IQR over here. Right. Next is your standard deviation. So we can give the name stand. standard deviation and what it will give you standard deviation we have used SD next you will have variance finally the last one is your coefficient of variation so maybe I just want it to come as CV only so I will use this coefficient of variation and for this I have used the small CV and I want a line to appear after this so let me just cross check if everything is spelling is correct if statistics for call range data range we have used for IQR we have used small IQR for standard deviations SD variance and CV so let me just run it and see what are the values yeah so you can see that first of all it has chosen this age column the range is 40 and IQR is 20 standard deviation is this much variance of the states is square of that and coefficient of variation is 0.29 right likewise you have these but you can see that I, if I you can control the number of decimal places also so I can write f over here and then range you can write the range specify the formatting for this up to two decimal places close this curly bracket and then put this f range data range so you can see the range has now been written only up to two decimal places so same thing you can see IQR I suppose we can write for all of these right so let me just change it for let us do it for just variance and likewise you can do for others also so here you will remove this and you will write this one as put here you will specify the formatting which is up to two decimal places close this curly bracket and then close this quote okay so you can see that variance has also been now written up to two decimal places so likewise you can do for others okay so we have done we are done with the different summary measures for measures of skewness we will see it in the next week because it, there it will be more evident when we draw histograms and from there we will be able to identify skewness okay so now we will be moving on to the Chebyshev's theorem basically provides bounds on the proportion of the data that falls within a certain number of standard deviations from the mean so for this we need to import one more python library that is matplotlib and from there we want pyplot so we are importing the module pyplot from the matplotlib library 
which is basically a comprehensive library for creating different visualizations in python and it is a very convenient and simple interface for creating different types of plots and charts so we will be using it over here so import matplotlib.pyplot which is a module from that as plt so we will first define the number of standard deviation so let me write as k values so we use the notation k usually so we call the uh, n numpy library is this basically we are calling the numpy library and trying to generate an array of values for the number of standard deviations so it will start from 1 and it will exclude the 6 so it will go up till 5 only so it will contain the values from 1 to 5 so you can change the range so i have taken over here one to this range but you can change is it according to your need so now we will define the corresponding proportions so proportion so i'll just write prop over here which is nothing but 1 minus 1 by k square k values and you know that if i have to write power so i will use double asterisk over here so this step is going to calculate the corresponding proportions within the specified number of standard deviations using the chebyshev's theorem formula that is 1 minus 1 by k square okay now we will create a plot so let me give the command for that multi dot figure we will give this argument fixed size to determine the dimensions of the figure fixed size is basically 8 comma 6 which means here it is the width is 8 inches and height is 6 inches so this will create a new figure for the plot with the specified figure size of this okay plot dot figure so we want to call the plot function over here so k values will come in the x axis and prop we want in the y axis next we want a marker as zero over there so it will specify that circular markers will be used to uh, denote the data points you can use something else also we will see that later so marker is zero and the line style we want suppose you want the line style to be a solid line so you just write this further you want the color to be blue and the marker size is to be 8 right so what it is doing it will create a line plot using this plot function so k values will be on the x axis prop proportions will be on the y axis and wherever you have the data points it will give, mark this o over there and line so you will have a solid line for this in blue color and the size of these marks will be 8 you can vary it according to your need now we want the label for x axis and y axis so plt dot x label so that will be number of standard deviations to appear in the x axis number of standard deviations k 
okay we want this to appear in the x-axis and on the y-axis we want the label to be proportion within k standard deviations and the title for the plot I can name it as Since a single quote is already in Chevy Chevs, that is why we will be using double quote over here. And then finally, we will write that we need the grid to be true over here. Because it will make it easier to read and interpret the data. So grid, we will write true. And then we will show the plot over there so let me just whatever we have generated let us see what it is plot dot show yes so you can see that here on the x-axis you have the number of standard deviations that we have given the name and here on the y-axis you have proportion within k standard deviations and the overall title is Chevichev's theorem visualization x-axis you can see the k values are there which goes from 1 to 6 we have written right so here you can see it is varying from 1 to 6 or 1 to 5 it is there because it will not include sixth one and on this side you have the proportion so that is why it is going from 0 to 1 only markers is 0 so you can see these are the data points that has come out so it has marked z uh, these O over here so I can but I can change it to asterisk also right so suppose I change this how will it change you can see the figure now right similarly I have used a solid line if I want a dashed line to appear I can use this and it will change I can likewise change the color of this plot also so I, from B I have used for blue I can use R so it will give me a red color and I can change the marker size so it will appear in this way and the grids you can see that since it is true that is why it is giving me grids otherwise if I can give the command false so you see that the grid lines go away However, if the grid lines are there it makes it easier to read and interpret the data so as of now we will keep it and I will explain you what does this mean now what it is saying is that if you now choose k as 2 right now k is 2 and if you see the data point corresponding to it then you see that the proportion of data points that fall within this is in fact your 75 percent right it falls within two standard deviations from the mean so 75 at least 75 percent of the data falls within this range and since Chebyshev's theorem does not assume any specific shape of the distribution and it is just providing a general rule that is true for all data sets. So you can use the plot to understand how the proportion of data within a certain range changes as you increase the number of standard deviation. Mm -hmm. So I can change this 6. Suppose I now make this change till 10 if let us see what happens. So you see that how the shape now looks like. Okay. So this is how you can visualize. So for different values of k, you can look at k at 3. You can see what is the value over here. It comes out to be around 88% something. Right. And likewise. So now we are going to see and compare the z scores. So if you can recall, how do we calculate a z-score? Z-score is basically x minus mu by sigma. So x is the data point, mu is the mean of that data set, and sigma is basically the standard deviations. So it measures 
how many standard deviations a particular value is away from the mean so it can be positive also and a negative value also so let us see so here let us suppose that we have two users with name raj and mary and you want to compare their z scores for the time they spent on the ott platform so based on your data set so first of all we are going to extract so let me just write the comment over here compare the z scores of raj and mary okay so first of all to do this we will extract since we are talking about the time spent right so we have to extract the time spent column from the original data frame that was their data right so we will first extract the time spent column so let me just write time spent column and so this was the original name in the data frame and here we will add this dot value so here what it is doing by mentioning this it is basically converting the column data that was in this time spent it has converted it into a numpy array okay and then it can be easily used for your mathematical calculations okay so we have first extracted this time spent column from the original data frame that is data and now we are trying to convert it into an array okay so this variable over here that is time spent column that it stores the values of the time spent column from the pandas data frame data okay so now we move on to because we have extracted this time now we want to calculate the mean and standard deviation for this data because for calculating the z score we need mu and sigma so we will calculate the mean and sd so you can write mean time as np so we will call the numpy library and with the mean function as we have seen earlier also so i will just write this time spent data and similarly sd can be sd underscore time so again you will call the numpy library and here you will use the std function and time spent underscore data mean you have got and sd okay so there is time spent not not it is not data it is column sorry time spent column and here you will have time spent column okay so maybe if you want to see what is the mean time so let me just run this it is around 5.005 and let us see what is standard deviation of that it is 2.85 okay so now suppose from the data set you have the time that raj and mary spent on these platforms so that is given so you can see right because here time spent column is there so if you want to see from here so let me just write maybe we can write here also so time spent column so how does it look like let us just see okay so this is now in the form of an array and these are the values so you can see it ranges from 5.1 9.1 9 is also there right 6.0 and uh, it is as low as you can see somewhere 0.5 is also there right so in this data you will have the time that raj and mary spent on this platform that is also with us so now let us consider that raj spent let me just write it raj spent suppose i can consider it as 6.6 .6, so he spent 
2.6 hours on the OTT platform whereas for Mary I will write Mary spent so let us see one of these values so you, we can consider here 0.4 is also there or we can take 2.3 from here to so 2.3 so these this is the time that Raj and Mary spent on the OTT platform. Now we want to calculate their corresponding Z scores. So let us write that Z score for Raj. So we know that the formula is X minus mu by sigma. So X is Raj spent minus what is mu mean time mean underscore time and this whole is divided by sigma that is SD underscore time and the other one is Z score Mary this is the time for Mary so you will just write uh, Mary spent minus mean time divided by SD time Okay, so now we have written the formula for uh, calculating the Z scores of Raj and Mary. So you just write compare this, compare the Z scores. So and this command for that is we will use a if else statement if Z sorry if Z score Raj is greater than Z score Mary. then you will say that we will just higher relative score will give me the output Raj else if if just copy it from here If Z score Raj is less than that of Mary, so it will give the output Mary. And if any of these conditions do not hold true, then finally we will have the else statement, which is higher relative score is that Raj and Mary have equal z scores now let me just mention underscore over here so what is now happening over here is that you are comparing the z scores of raj and mary so if Raj has a higher Z score, it means that he spent more time on OTT relative to other users. Otherwise, if Mary has a higher Z score, you will say that that she has spent more time on the OTT platform. And the third case can be when both have spent equal time. Right. So let us see the output. Now let us display the results. So we will print so we can also print the mean time mean time spent on OTT so that will be given by mean underscore time the other one can be the standard deviation likewise so we can print the standard deviation of time spent on OTT mean time so this will be SD underscore time next one will be your print so we want the Z scores also so it will give me Z score of Raj 
for the time he has spent on OTT. So that is represented by Z underscore score underscore Raj. Similarly, you can have the Z score of Mary also. So we will just change the name over here. And last we will print that who has a higher relative score. So we, you will use the F string here. The person who the person with the higher relative score in time spent on OTT is higher relative score okay so this is what you have so mean time we have seen it's approximately 5 hours standard deviation is around 3 hours so z score if you see it is 0.558 so it means that and it is a positive z score so it indicates that this value is above the mean and in fact it is 0.55 standard deviations above the mean okay and for mary if you see it is coming out as negative so z score over here is negative which means that it is these many standard deviations below the mean so it is 0.94 standard deviations below the mean and in the end what you get the answer is that the person who has spent who has a higher relative score in time spent on ott is raj so in comparison to mary raj has higher z score okay so we have seen the summary measures for categorical data set that is count, mode and proportion. Then we move on to the numerical variables and we saw the measures of central tendency that is mean, median, mode. We also saw the measures of variation that is range, IQR, standard deviation, variance and coefficient of variation. After that we saw and visualize the Chebyshev's theorem and finally we compared the z scores of two users in terms of the time they have spent on the OTT platform. Thank you.